Good afternoon, welcome to Show Studio. Today we're going to be talking about Gosha Rubczynski, uh, Autumn Winter 2015, perhaps the show I'm most excited about. Uh, Albon, if you'd like to start the intros. Hi, I'm Albon, I'm PR manager for Northern Europe at Diesel. Hi, I'm Anastasia. I work as an editor of the Calvert Journal. That's a magazine about Russian Eastern European contemporary culture, and I also write freelance for this Digital and Zero Fish to See. Hi, I'm Kyle. Uh, I'm the co-owner of the Good Hit Store, uh, East London-based brand and multi-brand retailer. Also a buyer of Gosha, so that's why you're yeah. here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Masha Mambeli. I'm freelance stylist, and I'm Russian. Cool. Um, okay, so, uh, so Gosha, this is really exciting. So according to the press release, um, he's doing a show based on the Paniaro, uh, which is probably my favorite ever Pet Shop Boys song. Um, it's also Alistair McLennan's favorite ever Pet Shop uh, Boys song, apparently. So, you know, it's very fashion. Um, and it's also an, a mix with the Nazpol. So it's like almost two opposites. So we have super left wing, youth movement and a Italian youth movement that was basically based on a rejection of politics, which is quite interesting in itself. And quite interesting that Gosh has decided to get political even if he's combining two opposite approaches because he's always been kind, kind of... Kind of avoiding it. No? Yeah. 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 It's quite a funny step. Yeah. But it's all about peace, apparently. Maybe okay. that's what he means. Why? I don't know. Maybe he wants to get through politics to get over it. I don't know. He likes to be over those things, you know, he's always been like a bit kind of like going over the idea of this like even the genders, it's always a bit blurry. Politics, he never really wanted to talk about it in interviews about Russia. He never mentioned anything, you know, everybody, everybody, every time people would ask him like, oh, what do you think about Putin? He kind of avoids the question mm -hmm. and like, like a lot of Russian people do, I guess. But he's very patriotic at the same time. Oh, he's yes. Very patriotic and deeply religious. I think you can't avoid the politics. It only until the point. Mm. But I think you're right because he's uh, not the guy who protests. He's no, he's the not. The guy who's productive, who does things. Yes, that's he true. He just works in fashion and photography, and I guess his action is just to do things and have an impact like this. He's very pro Russia, that's for sure. Yes. Well, proud yes. of being Russian. Yes, which is very. Not yes. a bad thing. And also draw a lot of his inspiration in Russia. I mean, he, like. He would never leave Russia, for sure. No, never. Because that's his uh, home, that's his vocabulary, the mu his muse, all the, you know, is in, in Russia. So, and it's really great to see it, that it translates. Because he has this band of skateboarders, this group mm -hmm. of skateboarders that basically every time you see Gosha in Russia, there's those 15, 20 kids behind him, the skateboarders that kind of like all hang out. It's really, really funny to see them. When you see Gosha, you see a group of people. It's never really just Gosha alone. It's quite funny. Yes, he, al he always talks about like, I do it for my friends. Yeah. My, fr my friends are most important, I do it for my friends. You know? Well, I'm, I'm kind of, I don't know, fashion's a very, uh, if you're into the bits of fashion, I'm into the sort of tribal bits of fashion. It's kind of quite a bromantic space, isn't it? And Russians are, you know, until they're drunk, sorry, but it feels <laughs> like when you're in Moscow until people have had a, drunk, a drink, and they're quite um, off, you know, like English people quite you know stern you know you go into a shop it's a bit like you know you almost feel like you you've done something wrong yes two drinks three drinks later it's like you know I will you can live in my house you can oh yeah you're you know, my brother you're my yeah, brother yeah, yeah. you're we're brothers for life you know how are your children are they okay you know like it's very bromantic culture for for me as an outsider is that yes you're right because it's you kind of like have defense you harbor to everyone Unless you know the person. So when you know the person, <laughs> you can be nice. But before that, I don't think so. So it's, you always feel like, and Russian rudeness is like, it's really harsh. It's like somebody just put brick in your face. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, it has, to, it has to deal with basically private and public spaces in Russia are completely different to what you used to perceive in here. So your private space, uh, where you're really nice, like your flat, uh, like public spaces, is like basically everyone's against you there. So. That's how, that's why we build kind of our emotional links in these two oppositions pretty much, yeah. Mm, that makes sense. And it's, yeah, and it makes sense why it translates so well into a brand that is so loved by 
youth culture. I mean, the other brand that we've talked about on these panels, Gosha and Nazir are the only brands really that have crossed over as like credible with the streetwear guys. You know, like, uh, which I find quite interesting. And I think a lot of that is because of the, his commitment to like his boys and, and yeah, that kind of idea of brotherhood. And I mean, I mean, so many menswear brands are sold like that anyway. What, um, so Kyle, you sell a lot, you sell a lot of Gosha um, at Good Hood. Um, why, what, what got you interested in the brand? Um, well, obviously, you know, he, the sort of pastiche element of the skip brands that he was doing. Uh, uh, I guess, uh, you know, it's part of the con family so it's like the chair and the cake of that showroom we, we buy from that showroom so uh, you know we saw it there and liked what we saw so that's how we got into it o obviously I was aware of the you know the way he was referencing certain street brand streetwear brands like fucking awesome and stuff like that um, yeah that was what are the, what's the girl should buy her like I think it's pretty fashion kind of buyer I mean we, 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 we wouldn't sort of say like it would be like our kind of necessarily our core kind of uh, buyer but somebody that's like based in East London, Shoreditch, you know, forward thinking, you know, they are quite um, fanatical about the brand. Mm. I, I mean, I was particularly interested to read about the Penny Nero uh, thing, you know, cause from obviously I'm not Russian, so I don't have like the insights that you guys have about Russia. Uh, I've never actually been there, but, you know, from what I've read about him sort of um, you know, it's, he's like been documenting through his photography the, uh, you know, the f sort of first wave of youth culture uh, in Moscow uh, and Russia. Um, and, you know, from what I've read about the Paninero thing, uh, I, I think I read that, you know, that I was like the only um, youth culture movement ever in Italy. Uh, I don't know if that's true, but um, it's quite interesting that obviously the normal cliche is that people would look to as starting a brand that, you know, he's gone outside of that and finding new things that people don't necessarily well, reference. It, yeah, depending on post-90s, I think there hasn't been anything else and it's still kind of there. I lived in a <laughs> small village in Italy <laughs> and you, you see them on the weekend, you know, the polo collar up, puffer jacket. It's really interesting. The mullet so haircut, it's still quite there. And, Maybe not in Milan, no, not in Milan, but if you go to like smaller cities in Italy, it's still quite there. Everybody that's between 15 and 16 is kind of looking like that still. Mm. It's quite funny, but it's quite a posh thing, actually. It's not very like rebellious working class kid, it's more posh kids. Because it's really about brands like Ralph Lauren, now they probably wear Montclair, puffer jackets, and so it's quite something, it's very anti-politic also. Mm. Yeah. Actually, I think it's something from Gosha's um, youth because uh, you mentioned Pet Shop Boys. Yeah, and yeah. actually Pet Shop Boys was huge in Russian 90s, early 90s. And I think uh, they came to San Petersburg and I think they have <laughs> lots actually... <laughs> Go West, yes. No, but they actually had lots of friends in San Petersburg art scene. And I think it's... Um, I think that kind of music was very embraced. Like it was mm. big club culture in 90s in San Petersburg, Moscow in arts, you know, so it's very, I think it's something that he really knows and he lived, you know, because there were magazines like uh, Ptuch and Om, who kind of maybe celebrated that kind of end of like, What were they you know, called? Pop, Ptuch and Om. And this yeah, is I've kind of- I've seen some copies of Om, yeah. it looked pretty really cool. I've yeah, seen a couple of copies when I was there, it's quite yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was, it was really, really cool. Yeah. Two magazines that were like for everybody, like when I was young, you know, it was like, whoa, this is uh, so exciting because it was like, you know, art and pop and music and, you know, gay culture, it's just everything, like, you know, clubs. I think this is what he remembers maybe, and it's cool that he tried to bring it into, like, today. Yeah, all mixed together. That was the the w funny thing is the superposition almost of all the sculptures together as a, as a one culture almost, when in Europe it was already very much separated in different subcultures almost. Gosha really brings all those things, like, into this one. Mm -hmm. I think it's, this is the interesting point I always find with him. It's interesting, the, the incredible know, amount of layers. It's like there is like this hip hop, this skateboard, this metal, this religion, this everything. And as a, oh, he makes it coherent when everywhere else, you know, when you bring it out of there, it's kind of like, oh, it's so many different people, but there it's one person. What was the, uh, what was the um, last time you told me the, the religious slogan on one of the things? It was something like, 
Devil Christ or something on one of them. Well, Aglias was uh, the the name of his zine, and um, it kind of this word was in a few of his early collections. It's basically a combination of ag Aglias and uh, Naglias, yes. And Aglias basically means the Lamb of Christ, pretty much. Lamb of Christ. Christ. Lamb. Uh, yeah, show. yeah, and also a good thing to remember that uh, mm -hmm. one of the earliest Gosha's show was staged in, uh, I think it was a church. Yeah, was yes, it a church? Yes, yeah, so it completely church, yes. was an Orthodox church. So. Church slash gym. Sla church slash gym. Yes. But, uh, <laughs> Which is uh, surprisingly, so. it's, it's quite uh, not that unusual in Russia. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. not unusual no. to have a gym in a church. No, basically you know, it was yeah, converted, uh, you know, when churches were destroyed during the Soviet oh times. Oh yeah, so they turned they them into something yeah. else. They turned them into gyms, swimming pools and stuff. Um. So. So yeah, yeah. Well the big the big cathedral was the world's biggest swimming pool, wasn't yeah. it? Yes, yeah. the, yes yeah. this is the one where Pussy Riots uh, oh really? Yeah, that used to be swimming pool. I mean, it makes yes. sense. I mean, you know, s you can see the secular god in sport. My body is a temple, and you know. I think they had those big spaces, and they wanted to de-religionize them. Yeah. Also, the the Soviet people. So they were trying to do like because they they didn't. I mean, they didn't really destroy churches, did they? No, they did. Well, they did. They did. Yeah. They did. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes, yeah. So they turned them into gyms. Yeah. Gyms or like a complete swimming pool. That's interesting. But can you get a swimming pool bigger than 50 meters? No, yes. it was enormous. Yeah. This was massive. Oh, really? It was open, open door. I actually really regret that I never went. <laughs> I mean, it's too late now. But it's, I think is it the the Pani Arrow thing? I don't know because because I I say it's really obvious. So I just want to explain to the audience, uh, and I apologize if it's obvious. But essentially, the Pani Arrow thing was was like so. It's a rejection of politics, um, kind of part of the new pop movement, so that the after punk kind of embracing of pop, uh, people like ABC, Duran Duran, like uh, Wild Boys was very popular with the Paniaro guys. So, you know, you can even, you can see that kind of, again, there's a kind of tribal coming together. And the Paniaro, it means sandwich. So it's like sandwich bar. So they, they kind of, they've rejected, um, because the sandwich bar was seen by, you know, with the, it's funny because the left always has two kind of elements. So it's always got the optimistic, futuristic element, but it's also got the, oh, capitalism is making everything, destroying everything that's good. So in uh, Sweden, they had a, uh, I can't remember what they were called, but they sang about plastic. And they were in the street going, we don't like ABBA, they're made out of plastic. And they were like rejecting, <laughs> rejecting like ABBA oh, because they were, <laughs> they were pressing them. Yeah, so it's like all the people freaking out at the moment on Facebook about, uh, you know, Crossrail closing everything in Soho. So it's like there's two, these two, and the Paniaro were like massively into the idea of like American culture, American sandwiches, you know, because in Italy it's like, oh, why would you have a, why would you eat food walking, you know, how vulgar, you know, so they were, they were really into the idea of this and, um, and all those American brands and it's very glossy and it's very rich kid. It was all about being a rich kid, which was, you know, the opposite of what had been called, which is, which is interesting and it's especially you know, it's interesting he's then com combined it with uh, Nazbol, who I didn't know very much about, but who are this quite hardcore left. I think they basically uh, have combined the ideology of ultra-right and ultra-left at the same time, um, somehow. And they're like anti-centrist, basically, so... Anti? Anti-centrist party, so... They're basically everything anti, I think, is what they're about. And uh, I mean, you mentioned politics, but I think in Gosha's work, uh, you always have to look at the str on the street. Like he looks to so much inspiration on the street and Nazbos are really about that. They're about like being outside protesting against everything, like throwing things around and stuff. Like kind of really aggression in its kind of really primal state. So maybe, maybe Does it th still exist, this party? Yes, because yeah, they yeah, say yeah, early yeah. 90s yeah. in the press release, but it's still there. Well, Limonov is very active. Uh, yeah. Actually, he's kind, he's kind of fascist. Okay. Yes, and uh, but maybe it's really interesting because you, it's a kind of. He's kind of views that he's really, really pro Russia, really anti West, really anti liberal views, mm -hmm. uh, but in a quite not. He, he's not. I wouldn't say he's supporting Putin. No. It's kind of like more complicated, but it's interesting to combine two opposites. 
like a lovers yeah. of consumerism yeah. and somebody who is like oh actually we don't want this we want you know something else Real I, I, I really can't wait to see it in uh, manifested in clothes yes but is it is it because is it was it not also some of what i read said you know because i know often these ultra left people turn into ultra right it's very normal but um was it not also about like like protest and like kind of these pussy riot kind of cultural interventions and this kind of thing at the beginning because that's what it said in the internet when i read it yeah i think it's really about protest i mean and one and lots of sort of the actions are pretty aggressive not necessarily like i mean egging politicians at talks that's pretty much what lots of these kids were went to like prison for short term about like i had a friend who did that um he was a rather intelligent guy but you know kind of protest is always really attractive for young people that's probably was what one of the and it's almost forces. impossible yeah. not to be not to yeah. protest right and kind of i mean i don't know fashions you fashion is always a protest even if it's just a boredom no i mean all fashion is a protest of boredom no yes that's a very good point actually because it's like i'm protesting against what i know so i'm inventing something that didn't exist before mm. which is like your existential protest yeah yeah um yeah so i just want yeah because i mean it's interesting because it, he does he does often speak about patriotic people and you do sort of wonder where that line is. Um, but did, did the youth protest in Russia? Yes. Do people protest? Are they, yes, yeah, they are on the streets with what's going on at the moment? Well, people do. Well, they try. Uh, they least. try, yeah. Um, I mean, it can be oh, right, like yes. suppressed. Yeah, sure. Like, and stuff. Also, yeah, cold. Quite cold doesn't help as well. Yeah. <laughs> like, you want to try to protest at <laughs> minus 20. <laughs> there was, this is quite scary anti-riot yeah. police in Russia. <laughs> yes. yeah. on. They're really, really scary looking. Well, they look quite cool, but they look <laughs> scary at the same time also. Well, you don't want to mess with them. A lot of people who actually protest are in prison right now. Sure. Yeah. Nobody knows, so it's really, it's really not a joke. Mm. You know, people protest and then they you disappear. Know, they disappear, mm. yes. And then they charged with ridiculous... Um, so actually, somebody was, uh, I heard, uh, arrested for putting a poster Je suis Charlie. Recently. Really? Yes, because it is also offended somebody that, you know, because religion is a very big deal in Russia, so... Oh, yes, yes. of course, so suddenly... Even yeah. supporting someone else's protest is like, oh... oh. Mm. So it's... Uh, I, I find it very interesting that he would tap into this because it's actually... It's obviously a very big deal in Russia right now, and he's a, Gosh is the kind of person who looks around him. You know, he's very interested in what's happening, not just in fashion, which makes him a very interesting designer because he's interested in art, in film, music, you know, just people as well. Like, he's into young kids who maybe have their own group and they maybe hang out just by themselves, maybe like 10, 15 people, nobody knows about. He's into kind of subcultures and obviously, Protests and politics is also big deal. So, you know, mm. I I'm not surprised that he's uh, looked into it. For he's not he's not a fashion person, that's for sure. Well, even if he likes it and he knows about it, but is 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 about more than this. Well, um, your your lotta is a, is a, is a well, I know because she's styling the show. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. You know, so I so, know, so like because um, it's really interesting. I think for some people. Probably for some people in fashion, uh, generally the people that are terrified of, uh, of the rest of the world joining them in their little fashion space, um, you know, would say, oh, Gosha isn't real fashion, it's just a sweatshirt, it's just a bit, he's making a conversion. Um, do you think this is a, I don't know, I thought maybe because you're, you're uh, lots I think of get, They kind of found each other, that's yeah. for sure. And it was like it was like obviously, but I don't think it's like. I think when he was doing this more sportswear inspired collections, and it's still there a bit, but mm. it was much more. And then he turned into something else. I think it's just about what he wants to talk about. And again, with Gosha, I think the interesting point is always to look at not maybe just a single top or a pair of trousers. Is to look at what he's going to do with the lookbook because this is the you know the total work of art is the finished mm. thing. Uh, he produced this really beautiful booklets that are lookbook, but they look more like books, you know. He does the picture, he does the casting, he does the layout. 
I mean, he's got great fashion. And that's really, that's almost like the art project, you know, so almost the clothes are just one of the means to get to that result, it feels. You know, it feels mm -hmm. like the clothes on themselves are not an end. It's just one of the means he's using yeah, to, to go to this final project, you know, with these Agliette books that he was publishing and then the other look books. They look really, really amazing. In the book that was published by Junsuke mm -hmm. Yamazaki, really beautiful book. He's, so. um, he's just shot the look book for ASOS. Well, really? Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know about that. Yeah. Yeah, we I mean, he we did a thing. It we published it on our website this morning. Oh yeah. Yeah, the cover journal. He did. He did a thing well. for um, Supreme, which obviously was. Yes, like they had a collaboration, no. And uh, but I like that. I like that. Gosha sort of is a bit like yeah, like he's done a couple of things that people are, you know, could be scared of collaborating on that level. And I think, I mean, it's great that he's kind of. But that's really his way also to do this kind of collaboration that he would do, you know, ASOS and mm. tomorrow he would do, I don't know, Comme des Garçons for yeah. him on the same way, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's this leveling everything as a one. It's what, it's, it's what I like about him is this, there is no like this change of value or this snobism or obnoxiousness in, about things. It just takes everything and just puts it through the Gosha Rupchinsky mm. machine and you know, and, and give the result. You can see, you can see, see it's him. Like, even if it's Asus, you look at pictures and say, oh yeah, here it is, here's a Polaroid, here's a skateboard, here's mm. a boy. It's all like Gosha stuff, yeah. just basically. Yeah, there's a different. skate bar, there's an orthodox cross <laughs> on the corner, you know, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's this no, kind of like good. Gosha that's element. A picture that inside a picture. <laughs> a picture inside a picture, those funny layouts he always does. It's uh, really, he really has his, his style. Uh, and yeah, it's I not just it's the clothes, it's a general aesthetic. I think it's interesting as well for me. I like I like to see him doing something like ASOS because it always irritates me. You know, like you know, you're you're talking about a designer and other people are just ignore. You know, like he does get a certain amount of love, but you know, he's been around for five years and he's always had a certain amount of love. But you're just it's just very funny how blind people can be and they want to go on about you know. They want to tell me that Prada is the boring of the new boring and it's meant to be boring and that's why it's okay boring. <laughs> but actually it's just fucking boring, you know? Like, <laughs> but like, and then they, with Gosha, they don't really know what to do with it. And then it's like, well, this guy is the guy getting asked to shoot the ASOS thing. So he's obviously, a, they obviously think that this guy doing weird things with Russian culture is really really able to talk to the mainstream really able to talk to people and I don't know kind of but to their target it's quite a young target I guess ASOS no I think people buying stuff on ASOS are pretty young like yes, 15 20 market. ish no and quite mass but gosh I can do that mm. because he can talk to you because maybe he's one of the and maybe Russia is one of the last youth culture that that there is around and maybe he's able to Grab, grab this and bring it back there. Maybe that's why ASOS is like, oh my God, he has that thing that in Europe we kind of, everything's a bit blurry. Well, I think it's partly because um, he's into skateboarders, okay? So yeah. this is a culture that exists everywhere. For sure. Because it's a very cheap uh, way to do sports and to have fun and hang out with friends. You just need uh, to buy it and off you go. And actually kids are not that different maybe in America you know, South Africa, Russia, UK, Germany. Oh yeah, they could they meet just love this and speed. there's no they cultural love difference. The they love this feeling that you can just do it with your body. And it just translates. And I think this is something that is not specifically, yes, it has a Russian flavor, but it's actually just, just this feeling of being young and free and living in the moment and being just like not grown up, meaning that like you don't think of, oh, I have a job, I have mortgage, I have a car, I have this. He wants to preserve it. He kind of, he kind of like with his work, really captured that emotion. That I think that's true, but I think you know there are a billion people creating imagery around skateboarding. I mean, there's probably no more boring a medium on earth than a skateboarding film. Sorry. Why do you think that <laughs> the yeah, that, stuff that's, is uh, so? That's marketing. Gosh, it's not marketing. You know, I mean, a lot of it has been turning to this kind of easy market tool. There's probably like millions of markets like, oh yeah, let's do something cool and young, uh, skateboards. But you know, the you know, Gosha, like, like, it's not the same. Like Gosha, you know, yes, he does skateboarding stuff, and I think you're right to some extent. But I mean, there are millions photographers doing skateboarding, or a million, like you know, and he's come along. I don't think his success is with the 
with the mainstream is only down to skateboarding. No, okay. I don't think it's it's a it's just maybe why it translates. Right. Because there are other designers in Russia that maybe don't translate to Europe at all, but his work does. You know, and actually just. Ultimately, people want to buy and wear his clothes mm. because they feel um, that ultimately they feel there's a truth in it because it came from real people that he knows. And I think maybe it's, uh, you know, I actually b think that he's very romantic designer. He's, he's like in love with his kids and he celebrates them and it's, people can feel it mm. all over the world and, and they want to buy his clothes. Okay, yeah. let's... Um Let's look at the let's look at the show. F thank you. That 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 makes sense. I think so. Uh, <laughs> that was a. Uh, I get what you mean. Yeah, he, he wraps it up in the accessibility of skateboarding. Oh, <laughs> so he's. Oh. I love the Tommy Ilfiger Russia China yeah. yes. T-shirt. Yeah, yeah. It's pretty and cool. The, the jeans. But the first the, denim. The first look is well, uh, uh, It's like a supreme pastiche, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like a, yeah. it says sport Which is in like Russian. <laughs> Ah, so it's, uh, it's, uh, the t-shirt says Gosha Rupchinsky, yep. actually. That's quite a funny one. I love this washed 90s uh, wash denim of a washed denim. Did his... Because um, sometimes I find it disappointing because some bits don't seem to get sold. Like, I couldn't find the dungarees in the last collection anywhere. Like yeah, but you know, it's the, yeah, that's always the problem of, like, from the showroom to the shop, there's... I guess there's probably, uh, also with the price point he has, it probably requires quite an amount of production per piece to keep the price point, no? I guess, because it's pretty accessible. Super yes. accessible. Mm. Which that I think is, is even, it, which I think is also one of the great things of the brand, the way it's so accessible. Why does he, does he make it so small on purpose? You talk about the sizing? <laughs> well, because I know <laughs> a lot of 30 somethings in fashion, not just my, myself. Um, it's the only bread I buy extra large. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's kind of interesting. I think it maybe has to do with all his models at 18. Yeah. So they're asking me. But is it, um, or maybe, because ja Com's Japanese, maybe it's Japanese. I don't know, he yeah, has a very funny sizing. I think it's probably, sort of maybe it's an inside joke of him, or maybe he just likes it. Maybe he doesn't <laughs> want fat people in his clothes. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he cares about that. Much, Maybe really. he's like, sorry, it's not bare. It's not Chinsky. like this, really. <laughs> but would you have bought much. the dungarees? Is that what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, no, I was totally looking for them. I mean, I have to well, buy the corduroy ones. And breathe in well, the, the corduroy ones. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, they were pretty cool. This yeah, thing. yeah. The socks of uh, trousers are so cool. He's got this kind of uh, sort of second uh, comfy organic thing going on like I think we associate him a lot with the tracksuits and the kind of harsh urban photography but he also has this kind of almost folky um, natural materials yeah there's a bit of that yeah yeah there, there, a lot of corduroy and lots of browns even the color yeah, palette yeah. you could find and that's kind of clashing against the bright color more sportswear part of the collection. Like there was a couple of fits that like the that number 18 is pretty much Paninero, no? <laughs> quite, much, did, um, quite much look like that. The snow wash jeans and the tight t-shirts in bright colours. Well you know I kind of see Russian lunches in it yes. uh, quite a lot. That's uh, exactly what I thought as well. It's uh, that kind of guys who would like hang out around the kiosk. Yeah you also. Know, and like yeah, they would have a gun. Like. They would be like <laughs> <"Hey>, <laughs> yes. What, like who are these guys? Just like uh, just rough guys. Mm, They're kind the of 90s, still there. <laughs> kind of like. <laughs> They're still there. <laughs> Are they? I've seen some of them. <laughs> no, but they if you go out, stuff. you know, if you go out, in not in the neighbor center neighbor. of the city, I remember yeah. living, you know, kind of far out of the center of St. Petersburg, around the kiosk, there's still some of those guys. They look a bit older now. <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, it's funny that in the same, into the same fashion. I love the detail that he did again, uh, which is a shoestring belt. Yeah. I think it's really, it's really beautiful. It's very kind of like a beautiful nuance. That Tommy t-shirt is great. That Tommy t-shirt is amazing. Do you think he's going to get into trouble because of that? No. No, but no. just two flags. I don't know. I think uh, Tommy Hilfiger should be very happy because, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you'd have to think full Tommy designer Hilfiger referencing him. Yeah. You know. no, I'm always wondering, you know, like if, if there's always this trademark thing. He gets away with it, doesn't he? 
Because if you think the first yeah. look was a, it's like a supreme thing, it's like yeah. he's basically the very first look. He's like mm. he doesn't give a fuck. But it's quite a normal you know, like actually. It, when yeah. it comes to like pastiches, like normally people will be like, it's retro, referencing stuff from the past. And perhaps sometimes when I've looked at his stuff, it's like referencing stuff that happened a year and a half ago. It's quite. It's quite you know it doesn't have that sort of you know time to sort of become like oh you're allowed to reference that yeah you know so I think it's quite a bold move. You know to me nineties in here is also a combination like a crazy combination of patterns and colors and stuff because in the nineties you used to wear like whatever is available so you just took you've got this pair of awful trousers you get this brown top and. You and put a kind of coat weird checked yeah. coat on it, and yeah, check you just coat wear of a track what, suit what is there. Yeah. Just, so I kind of like it's pretty liberating, basically, not to be afraid to seem like lame colors, you know, all the stuff like huge jeans. It doesn't particularly make you attractive if you wear it, probably. Mm. Uh, like for a normal audience, I mean. Yeah. Not for us fashion obsessed. Yeah, I guess people that <laughs> see people dressed like that in the street yeah. would think like, like yeah, those people that? Like they don't really have money probably. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> they yeah. would think like they, they they wouldn't think they come out of a cool fashion store. Yeah. <laughs> but so I don't know, I'm not sure actually. I don't because know. Because actually when you look at the clothes up close, it's amazing. Oh yeah, I know, I know it is. It's but you know for people that don't know probably that don't really know what it is about and maybe mm. the people that go to buy things that I don't know. You know, expensive um, luxury Italian brands, and if they see some guy in the street wearing like this, I don't think they would think it's part of this fashion week. No, so yeah, completely. You know what I mean. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, completely agree. That's what, what I was feeling. His clothes are quite basic when you get up close to them. Yeah, basic, you know. but um, yes, basic, but. But I was speaking to Finn Diesel, who was meant to the DJ, not the superstar, who was meant to um, be here, um, but he's ill, and his uh, his boyfriend, the beautiful Matt Cardell. Um, Ardell, oh sorry, whichever. Um, it normally models for Gosha. And uh, he was saying that, you know, there's a strange sexuality in the clothes. Like, there's often, you know, uh, he did all these like crop tops, like mm -hmm. knitwear, and he did, you know, there's often kind of, uh, you know, I've got a sweater with a, st a strange zip so you can show your shoulder. It's the only bony bit of me. Um, there's like, uh, you know, he started off with very tiny shorts. Um, I love those pants, they're amazing. It's funny that sexuality, nobody talks about it. And Finn was saying maybe nobody talks about it because Gosha doesn't really want, um, doesn't talk about sex. Well, he doesn't talk about it either, no. But actually his work is very sexy. Yeah, it is super very, sexy. Very sexy. But him as a person is not really, he's actually a kind yes, of Yes, because asexual. it's a kind of sexiness of... Uh, Again, of a young person who doesn't know that he's sexy. It's not sexuality when you're aware mm -hmm. and you project it. It's, some, it's an awkward sexuality where you... I like you that awkward sexuality. <laughs> actually, you know, you, you, you want it, but you don't know what exactly it is yet. But, but you're right, his clothes is very sexy. I remember being with a friend at Liberties and he was agonizing over buying this a top that was cut here and it was quite a lot, but not not a lot. And at the end, he said, "You know what? I just feel sexy." <laughs> so he he bought it. it. It's really it's a really. I think this is a great reason to buy fashion. Mm. You feel sexy in it. Yeah, but it's not very normal. Men don't really do that very often. Like I mean, we do. I mean, we do, but we don't. You know. Like there's so many labels you don't buy because they're sexy. I mean. It's not what, you know, I think women are thinking about sex in that way much more. I mean, you know, we're meant to be now, we're all meant to be like, you know, post Craig Green, post J-dubs, we're meant to be like sexual all the time. But I don't know when the last time I went into a shop and thought, I'm going to look sexy. <laughs> no, but it means different things for different people. Because... Uh, no, but it's good that you're saying this, I'm just... Yeah. It's just for some people it means... Uh, wearing tight dress and uh, like if you go to Paris, maybe 90% of women, they're wearing tight dress. Mm. But actually, I, like I don't find it personally very sexy. I find like maybe girl in a tracksuit is mm, way sexier. Just if you have, you know, I'm, sh I'm sure actually girls in Gosha's clothes look really, really yeah. sexy. Yeah, well they do yes. actually. Huh? We've see, I've seen a couple of them and they do. Yes. There's a couple of girls that wear that actually. I love that jacket. 
the check one with the yeah. is it like mm. shearling lining? That looks wicked. I actually yes. like it much better close up rather than shillers. I think it really brings out the details, like the prints, the words, the little bits which actually make it special. Not sure. just like it's funny this blouse on shape I got given a top at Christmas, super old top that has this like nineties <laughs> blouse on shape and I so nearly wore it today. <laughs> I thought, oh, this feels a bit gosher and then I was like, I'll change my mind. Um, I really like this no washed combat pants on yes. number and nine, the they're really amazing. With the t-shirt that yeah. says Gosho Pchinski and has a Russian and Chinese flag. It's, uh, it's very subtle, it's a in, in, very interesting message. So yeah, in the press release he was saying it's yes. about the, the competition between China and Russia. There used to be a war, there's not some kind of like productive competition it's kind of interesting way that he but he's using a lot of, he's been using a lot of Chinese words in his t-shirts and his clothes in the last mm. seasons all the time I think there's this kind of like the link was about sport maybe there's all this kind of like you know this synchronized gigantic sport which is also a very communist way of putting mm. events together the idea that some church were also turned into gym so there's this mm -hmm. religion sport competition it's interesting to see that also all, all mixed together in the collection and if you think about somebody wearing like a Chinese and Rus um, Russian flag, you know, in London, it's like, it's quite punk. Yeah, it is actually. You know? yeah. Well, yes. it's, the, yeah, it's, <laughs> the enem it's the enemy, right? Yeah, well. I mean, Russian people are kind of being dissed constantly in, in, in England, especially in the Daily Mail, no? The Russian yeah. people are buying <laughs> all the properties. <laughs> <laughs> They're killing central London. And you're like, well, who's selling it? <laughs> <laughs> no, absolutely. You know, it's, a, it's quite a funny, funny position. Yeah, no, 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 absolutely. And, uh, and also they're also seen as like the, the, the people that are like, oh yeah, for, for luxury market, if you think about it, it's like, oh yeah, thank God the Russian and the Chinese are coming to department stores to buy things. And on the other hand, but please don't stay, you know, it's kind of a funny, funny way with London. Like we well, don't want them to the buy all the properties and things, but we, we don't mind where they go and, and buy everything at Harrods. Well, it's funny, isn't it, as well, that you put Russia and... I always think it's funny that Russia and China go together like that because Russia is probably the most on the precipice, the most, like, de in decline kind of power. And then, you know, we all kind of know deep down that before we die, we'll all want to be Chinese, you know. There will come a point <laughs> where we will, like, you know... But what's funny to see is the two ways that communism evolved, no? Mm. One which is a bit of an economical fail with Russia mm. and one that's basically the most liberal but communist popular democracy. <laughs> that's kind of interesting to see the two ways communism took, the Russian way and the Chinese way. It's kind of interesting. No, 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 abso absolutely. And to see it brings them back together though. That's interesting. Economically, it's two, two different ways that are really, really interesting. Because Russia change. stayed on natural resources when China was really all about manufacturing and they took completely different ways and it evolved in now China being the biggest economy of the world and Russia being the one that's crashing down the most in the world. Mm. I'm actually really curious if Gosha had been traveling to China, if he actually visited. I think he's been. Mm. Yeah, I think he's been to Shanghai. Because uh, I'm not sure if he would think about this kind of political, economical I don't think it is, no, but, but I think uh, there is, we, we can make that link. It's spiritual, yes. it's spiritual. We, we can make like, that link. You know, yes. I mean, you would not, you wouldn't call it political or economical if you spoke about Hollywood or you spoke about the Pet Shop Boys, you know, like it's totally normal for everybody to want to be British or American, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's, you just grow up, you just, you don't even think about it. It's the most intuitive thing ever to want mm. to be American. You know, you look in the mirror and you, you're like, you know, the first time you brush your hair, you're like trying to be American, right? Mm -hmm. like, sure. Yes, that's true. That's uh, actually, Ralph Simmons felt like this. Ah, uh, right. Yes, he, ah. he wanted to be American, you know. Ah, but which is interesting. But what I wanted to mention is that I've been to China, and I, when I was in China, I really felt like I went into Soviet Union. Oh, uh, yeah. It was completely we the most weird experience, like you actually, in your childhood. You're completely in the Soviet Union, just like the way people are. Because you saw the yeah, you were probably very young when Soviet Union fell down, or not even born. I don't know. No, I was, um, I was uh, at school. Yes. Yeah, so you <laughs> saw that fall down. <laughs> yes, I remember uh, Soviet Union very well. Just the tedium, 
and just I don't know it's just really strange you know people had really fulfilling lives but it's just different reality and and then it just boom just disappeared and everything went really fast and you had that same feeling in China then yes it was just just like going in the past it was the most weir weird experience so I think maybe he really f maybe he went to China and he really felt this and he brought something I think we should say but I have a feeling it had been for something I have a feeling it had been not so long ago I don't know, I remember Lotta mentioning something, maybe I'm dreaming it, but... But you know, it's, it's also like, I feel like the next, you know, the Italian... There will be a group, there, w it, there will be a group of kids that want to be Chinese. You know, that fashion-wise, as with the Paniaro and everybody will be like, <gasps> Why do you want to be American? And there will be a load of kids that come up who just want to be Chinese. Well, there's a lot of group of, you know, I was... In France, there's a lot of kids that want to be Korean because of K-pop, yeah. for example. Oh, yes. And they're learning Korean, like Korean is a language at school, it's kind of <laughs> catching up in wow. France because of K-pop. This is kind of awkward, but you know, China is catching up because of probably economical purpose. You know, yeah. people want to learn Mandarin or Cantonese because they think it can help them in their career. But some French kids want to learn Korean because they want to be K-pop stars and dress like them. Maybe it's quite funny. Maybe this guy's C-pop is going to come up. Yes, I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> no? That will be fun. What about Russian uh, pop then? Uh, well, uh, well, this is Russian. Russian. This is Russian no. pop. Uh, well, it's a shame actually we can't hear the music because the music yes. is uh, by like it, young, exciting can, producer. Can we see the, tr the shoes uh, closer? So do you know the guy that makes the music? Yeah, but pop, pop. techno? Yeah. What is that? So it says DIY techno. Yeah, it's like pop. But it's like basically a guy who's also a really great graphic designer, Pasha Milikov. Okay. You probably met him if you know Gosha because they're friends. Possibly. Uh, yeah, so, so he okay. is really talented and he also did graphic design for all Gosha's books, as far as I know. So. And okay. he, he makes music and I just, I think it would be a really interesting reinvention of maybe this kind of first Russian techno from the 90s, but contemporary version of it. So yeah, I'll definitely go home and listen to it. Yes, me too. After. Can you post yes. it somewhere so we can listen to it too? Yeah, That'd be great. <laughs> well, where can we hear it? I, uh, I don't know if there is a video, probably. Yeah, like prob they're probably going to put a video. I can't what? wait to hear that. What is this shoes? I can't quite see. I don't um, know if you made not, it. It's not the Vans collab, is it? No. 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 It's not the Comper collab either, because he did something with Comper also. Oh yeah, let's not talk about that. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? <laughs> why is that? It wasn't my favourite. Oh. No, I was not a big fan of those shoes either. But then they were really awkward again. And he likes this kind of awkward thing. He's sometimes. good at awkward. awkward. He's you know? good at awkward. And this is what's funny when, when you said awkward sexuality. It's kind of a funny thing. It kind of comes back and, and again and again. This kind of weird feeling of awkward about the shape, about the sizing, mm. about the but mix of But there's also elements. this weird sort of almost quasi scandy awkward. Like in a lot of those comics, like I love nothing more than looking up 1980s arty communist people because oh. I, I love the like I love the fact that you know they're, they're being arty they have their life their life is quite nice you know they're always like doing nice things but they have to compromise slightly you know just like I have to compromise and talk about how great fashion brands are so that I'm allowed to write right and so in communism you just have to talk about how great communism is right you know so it's really super, super interesting to see those compromises made, and um, and uh, and yeah, they they always look a bit like there must be, you know, there's something that keeps them going. This awkwardness, like your hair, like your kind of bowl hair there, right? Yeah, there's a kind of <laughs> it's uh, quite a it's Japanese quite person. It feels <laughs> quite communist. It feels like quite kind of. But the Soviet fashion was quite something, you know. There was yeah. this exhibition. There was this book. I remember there was this exhibition that uh, was part of a garage, something yes. about Soviet fashion, I can't remember, or Moda, something it was called, mm -hmm. I forgot what was the name. It was quite interesting to see those crazy people, they were mixing lots of military uniforms, remixed, fucked up, and old. Like the Soviet the, punk it, was insane. Yeah, it was that really was crazy. Yeah. And lots of, there were like a couple of like cool brands back in the days that obviously we, we never heard about outside of Russia. But Which ones? If I could remember the names. I can't, unfortunately. Uh, but I, I, I guess I'm. I have the, the book in Russian, so it takes they me look a bit to like read sort of, of, you know. They look a bit like sort of folky clowns, like you know. There's this kind of in a lot of these communist countries. There's this like weird sort of folky clown, 
circusy kind of, I can't quite think of the word, but there's the, 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 the distinct look to it and it's always quite awkward and quite a, bit, a little bit fairy tale, but a little bit geometric. <laughs> I, I need to see the image to yeah, but do you know what's, what's interesting? I think you're talking about these people who were here looking towards Russia, f f the Soviet Union, sort of, and the awkwardness of it. I think uh, the awkwardness of this uh, for Russian people would be that, like, you selling, you're selling us the crap, awkward fashion from the 90s. We remember it too well. We don't want it. That's probably, I mean, I'm just imagining, like, regular person reaction. But here, this is really interesting because you've never seen it happening in Russia. You were never dressed in like uh, crap track pants and like whatever you found. So this becomes interesting. So this is what's really interesting about Gosha, this kind of taking it and giving it to audience which doesn't know the references. I think it's pretty, pretty great. This kind of, you know, the same process you're talking about, but going another direction. Mm. Yeah. I mean, there's probably lots of kids that actually kind of dress in this kind of, of, of vibe outside of the big cities also. Mm. If you think about Russia being, just being not point. Moscow or Petersburg mm. being the, the rest of the country. Would you not say that r sort of Russian fashion's sort of behind the... Is that what it is? It's mm. like 20 years behind. No, I wouldn't agree with that, no. Y uh, no. Because like, I, I see like Gosha's stuff and it's like, it's got a naivety about it, you know, and I like that, you know, because when you look at, you go into sort of calm and it's like, the concepts are so practiced and refined it beca almost sometimes becomes boring you know and I, I think that somebody like Gosha is like unfortunately it's not really reflective of Russian fashion because right. there's also all those girls that kind of have to spend their parents money in couture collections <laughs> sure sure like this, sure you know mostly it's that it's so it's really kind of a standalone one in there and there's a couple of kids that are also starting there's this Anton Lissin that's also you know oh, doing yes, this yes. this kind of like spin-off of Gosha the post Gosha generation those kind of model turned photographer turned yeah. they're going to do this black metal print sweatshirts and you know it's interesting to see also what he kind of opened the door to those kids yeah, to do their own it. thing which didn't completely. exist before it was all this very like bling bling expensive fashion for this intelligentsia elite of Moscow it was mostly these really expensive curtain dresses. And yes, then, but actually yeah, you're talking about something... Yeah, he's, he's really opened yes. the door to those kids. And Anton yes. is one of them, I Yeah, think. I completely agree. That's true, because actually I remember initial reaction to Gosha's stuff in Russia was very negative. Of course. And a lot of people really hated it. They really felt like, oh, what is this? What is this kids from the state? What did they have to say? Like, I know. It was really uh, That's quite... That's Russia. Yes. But th there was really this, this story of the elite that owned the fashion. They were not so happy to see the people from the blocks in the suburbs owning it. It was uh, really about that. It's their best export. No, but the thing about Russia as well is that I'm not sure it works like this in England. When in Russia, you have to make your name abroad. And then you're very cool in Russia. Yeah, it's but uh, do you think now Gosha, because he has a name abroad, is better in Russia? Yes, of course. he. Yet he spent he started a there, though. He started he there. He spent a lot of time working in Russia. He he been, but he did also he made a name. There. Also he did. Um, he's very respected abroad as a photographer, as a designer. So there can't be um, a lot of people in Russia really know about it, and I think they respect but him more because he did the show in Paris, or because he's been published in international publication. Not because because I remember the first show he did in the. In that gym church, was uh, Anna Dulgerova was helping him behind mm -hmm. it, and she was really pushing for it. And she's true; she got a lot of shit out of that. People were really like, "What the fuck are you doing? Mm -hmm. Why did you put that? This like this kid from the estate, and uh, yes. it's not it's not part of the fashion week. He should not be there. It's not expensive fabrics." And the people behind Cycles and Seasons mm -hmm. were complaining that yeah, more yeah, Cycles and Seasons. Yes, that was it. I'm um, just talking maybe about establishment because uh, yeah. Because I'm sure he had a lot of supporters. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. But even the cool right fashion the people in Moscow didn't like him, really. But to be fair, I mean, I think the one one person maybe interview wrote about that show, but Gert wrote about that show as well. You know, like Gert from Fantastic Man, and yeah. that's what every that's what everybody yeah. saw that Started. one yeah, piece, for sure. and then that's yeah. what everybody. But there was a piece up. in the New York Times that was mentioning it also before that. The oh, first really? hint I had from him was a quote of about New York Times they were writing a like a roundup of Moscow Fashion Week and the like and there was this kid showing mm. those weird like black metal skateboarders 
in a church gym in, 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 in Moscow. And that was the first time and I got kind of interested into that and then I met him in Berlin a couple of months later. Mm. Yeah, yeah. With Anna. It was quite funny. And then Gertie yeah, was on it. I don't know the timeline, but it's true. But it's I mean, it's the most ridiculous. I mean, yeah, it should be so obvious. I mean, it seemed like the most obvious. Like, obviously, this is going to be cool. Like, like, what's wrong with you? It just I looks know, like it's, right? it's, it's actually amazing how obvious it seems now and how not obvious it seemed. Uh, it was such a major discovery for Russian people themselves. Like, I think Gosha is like a major influence on both fashion and photography because he showed fashion people that this is easy, you can do it too. Mm. And he yes. showed photographers that, guys, what we see around us, it's not, it doesn't look like Europe or the States. It's probably ugly, it's weird, but, but it this, is, I mean, this yes. is unique. This is what you should be capturing, which you should be like selling. I think you can see an influence of that. Yeah. You know? There's lots of people, lots of like young kids on Instagram from Russia or on Tumblr that are doing their work and it's kind of like, it's very post-Gosha if we can say yes, so, but yeah. there's a lot of them. And, and they're all super, super young, yeah. like 14, 15, 16, girls, boys from, and from everywhere else but Moscow. So it's people from the real Russia, kind yes, of, you know? Yes. It, this is an interesting point also. It's like Moscow is not just, this is not Russia, this is the rest of Russia. And people from other cities that don't even know where they were, you know, they have to look them up and, oh, it's there. Well, because you know, I think it's interesting. Gave them the voice. Yeah, in a way, in a way, and uh, suddenly they started to have a voice with this aesthetic of fashion and photography. That's interesting. It's funny because we're, we're going to do Walter later this afternoon and I was thinking to have more of this talk then, but I mean, there's no reason why it can't carry on. I mean, it's just so, you know, uh, that's the funny energy of fashion. That, you know, the energy of fashion is stay fashionable, you know, which means don't do something new. but. It's always the new that's the productive thing. It almost feels like a cliche, but it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's you just doing your own individual take that will get you the name. It's never, you know, those princess dresses, nobody knows who those people are. Nobody cares, nobody's heard of them. There's maybe Denis uh, Chimichev. Well, there's a couple of girls also. Yeah. Yeah. Don't to say their names. Yes. This is a design that everybody <laughs> obsessed in Russia. I mm? don't understand why he's not famous. In the West. Denis Timachov? Yes. Really? Because yes. he's not doing the collections anymore. He's, he's a surfer and like he's But wasn't he, he showing in Milan at some yes. point? Yeah, he was showing in Milan, no? Maybe Italy was not the right choice. He did no, something I interesting at one point, right? It was kind I of fun. I think that's not the reason. I think it's... He's very like... Uh, but people respect him though, no? In Russia. Kind of. I mean, he owns like good clubs and restaurants in Yeah, the, the bar restaurant yeah, in Moscow is kind of the only place so I like it. Yeah. It's 15 pounds for a it's pint. Yeah. I know, I know, because yes. after being in St. Petersburg, I arrived there. I was like, that's a hundred times the price <laughs> of a beer. Yes, it's a, but it's very, very hip. But I think it just doesn't translate because he he's like being ironic about Russian stuff. Mm -hmm. And I don't think now, with irony, it, nobody cares. It's no. not irony. Well, what is he doing is now? Like, you know, his restaurants in No more fashion. No, I don't no think so. Like, like uh, shoe belts. I don't think yeah. we have yeah. string belts. See, yeah. this is interesting because Finn, because uh, I spoke to Finn and said, uh, "Are you, you know, are you ill?" And uh, and in and he said that he thinks Gosha is very kitsch. Hmm. And you're saying it's ironic. Why do you think it's ironic? Because, you know, it's like. I don't know. You know, like last se I think about the season last season, it was like it was like tux jackets, but when, when you got up to them they were made out of like PVC. Mm. Mm. You know, and that's when I talk about this sort of naivety of it, you know, from a distance it looked like really quite high end. Mm. When you got up to it, it was like it reminded me of something that I would associate with Ru Russia, you know, like kind of uh, perforated plastic fabrics and bits of fake fur, you know. Maybe this is also what, what they had back in the days in Russia. Maybe it's also this. I don't know if it's really as much ironic in mm. Kitsch uh, or an homage, an homage to those actual this pieces that he liked when it was in the 90s and it was all about plastic and PVC. And well, it's both, right? I mean, I, like, ironic I doesn't I have to be nasty. Ironic can no, just no, no. be like. I don't think it's that ironic. It should be affection to yeah. something. I, actually, it's really interesting to see this collection because. Previous collection, when I saw it, immediately I thought Malevich. Mm -hmm. It just really looked like mm -hmm. a piece of art, just like yeah. There was those color blocks, just and the color yellow blocks, and the red these amazing checks. They yes. were so complicated, and actually, you can go now. I think I'm not sure if the exhibition still runs in uh, Tate, but oh if yeah, you go to see Malevich, you can see how 
influence he is because you know he's very very clever guy he reads a lot of books he watches you know he talks about his favorite film Andrei Rublev Tarkovsky and it's interesting this collection is very um, it's a more character based I think it's more more character based how yes. so I don't know it just made me think who is this guy you know you yeah. know like if you think as well going to the irony thing it's like a Tommy Hilfiger logo with like the bit you know total um, communist superpowers in the logo that's mm. pure irony yeah. Mm. yes yeah, actually sure. yes I, I can see your point yes yeah but we, but that's serious irony but that's serious because yes. it's yeah. Russia but <laughs> it's isn't that that's serious but funny at the same time I don't know that's what people missed from um, Mr. Scott, isn't it? You know, that, that just because something is ir ironic doesn't mean it has to be uh, trashy. So, you know, people have taken irony, you know. Uh, I, I mean, if, you, if you've unfortunate enough to read much on postmodernism and when people got really <laughs> excited about the idea of irony, oh, it was, you know, it was really jokes. But then people sort of really ran away with the idea that watching X Factor was kind of somehow sticking it to the man, you know, that... You know, the, 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 I mean, I know they also enjoy it, but they tr some people try and disguise it, or some writers try and disguise it as like, a, you know, loving the working class or some bullshit, right? Oh, yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, and people always think that irony has to be trashy, but irony can be serious. Yeah, but I think, yeah, maybe that's a dead serious irony in an awkward sexuality. <laughs> I, mean, we, I love those two. Combination. Yeah, works quite well, well um, though. I'm liking it. It's this. like, you know, uh, I mean, everything Oliviero Toscani did was ironic, but it was deadly serious. You know, that, that kind of like, yeah. that kind of, um, you know, your, some of Diesel's great stab campaigns had like, Oh yes, a serious undertow. You know, like the amazing one with the um, uh, the African unions uh, giving charity to the to yeah. The it was it was a lot. I mean, it was a lot about irony for sure. But it was also like some kind of very serious message in the back. Mm. That's for sure. Always. There's so much more to that. There's so much more satisfying having a serious irony. Uh, you know, like. Um, that the hipster, this guy's irony, like, oh, like I watch X Factor, but it's sociological research, you know. Yeah, yeah. You like know, polite kind of, irony. Yeah, I don't like that so much. You know, like the t-shirt, you know, remember the t-shirt with Jimi Hendrix and it said Bob Marley. I mean, that was a pretty sharp at one point t-shirt. And then there were all these like copycat t-shirts that just, you know, didn't make any sense. And, and uh, you know, yeah. Well, th those t-shirts could be at some point almost like computer generated you now for like make your own little cool t-shirt brand and yeah, yeah. use a black metal font and add this and add this. No, we could all make a line like this overnight, I guess. It's not really... I think it's, this is why the seriousness of it is important. I but wonder how... He, he's, got, he's got like people wearing trousers with their socks like tucked oh. in and stuff. Yeah. Is that deadly serious? Because they're into sports. Probably, oh, right. yeah, it because the socks are saying sports. So. You know, sometimes I think Maybe Russian is pretty. Those. Russians are pretty straight to the point. Mm -hmm. I think most of the time, and the <laughs> socks say sports, so it's made to do sports. So the, the trousers are tucked <laughs> no, in. Sometimes you don't need to look much further. No. I, okay, if you cycle, you put uh, your socks up because. Yeah. Uh, I like that. And you, I like oh, yeah, you are like, yeah, I mean, course. I mean, you know, like, I mean, there's a lot of tucking of sock going. On. I mean, you, you th this idea that you can't be. Um, deadly serious on your t-shirt while being completely ridiculous on your socks is that, like you can be both <laughs> you can have ridiculous socks and serious t-shirt another thing is t-shirt oh. tucked into jeans what does that mean well it's just like I, I just don't see why you can't have stupid but socks t-shirt tucked into wants, jeans is very Russian yes so. <laughs> always so tucking Russian. everything inside the jeans even jumpers <laughs> <laughs> it's like amazing they would tuck everything inside their jeans all the time <laughs> even jackets I mean it's like Everything. Kyle, what do you think you'd be ordering from this? Um, the jacket, you know, uh, the Tommy Hill jumper, for sure, and like the t-shirts of that, you know. Um, I think, you know, for us, perhaps the acid wash denim might be difficult. But you've been but selling but if you a want lot to, of If you want to buy it, I'll get you one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've been <laughs> selling, weren't you selling quite a lot of the uh, junior um, denim? Yes, yes. But that that's kind of slightly different. It's a lot more refined, right? right. And it's aesthetic, you know. 
I love this. Just because I love this for the fact that I, I find it like ironic and naive, and you know, but it's a it's a different kind of you know like the work in in for instance, Les Junior Pants is like there's so many patches. It costs X amount. I think what do you find it. attractive? Like, and you did explain it quite well before, but I've just never heard anybody call Gosha naive before, and I think you're really correct. I think that's a really good point. But just, just why do you find that attractive? Because I think when you, when designers they learn their concepts, you know, and they're used to working with materials, it becomes kind of stale, even though it might be quite amazing, you know. And mm. there's a beauty and sort of naivety, and I, for me, that's absolutely what Gosha represents, you know. That's fluffy fake fur jacket. There. Yeah, just. Things that might be a bit wrong, but you know, it's kind of like that's what makes it fun and new. There's a lot of element of like assumed wrong also in in these collections. Like this kind of like, you know, this bit of wrong that we know, but it's like so wrong but so right. Sure. It's so wrong, it becomes right again. Yeah. Mm. Like the blue and the brown and Mm. the and the fur and the red and all together. It's kind of like classic, almost <laughs> military. It's almost this military garment that you can also buy in Russia, and you know, lots of people wear military garments because it's very accessible and, and, and cheap, and it's everywhere. Practical. And, and cheap. And cheap, yes. and you can actually and warm. mix mix and super warm and mix of a tracksuit. I mean, it's so many people are really yeah, actually maybe I should like get that. Go next time. You know? yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's do um, closing comments because I could sit and talk about this all day. I know. But, um, Me too. I think we all can. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but um, yeah, so M- Masha, maybe, maybe normally I start that side, but I'm going to start this side today. So Masha, what, what, just sum up the show for us and your opinion on it. I think it looks great. I really, really want to see the garments up close and just to feel the fabrics and see how they are and hopefully shoot it. Um, I don't know, I'm just uh, really happy that he has this success of showing and exploring and just also, you know, growing. I think he's growing as a person, as a designer. And I'm just really fascinated to see his journey and what he will do next, you know, how, how it will go further. Okay, thank you. Um, Kyle? You know, I'm, 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 I'm sold into the idea of Gosha, you know, as a character. Uh, you know, I, obviously for us, we always need to go to the showroom, see it, see how the pieces work for us. But I, I you know, I think total winners, the uh, Soviet and Russian Tommy Hill reference, quite fun. It looks like some good pieces in there. So, and it's uh, it just bonkers to have people with trousers tucked into socks and like sport boots. <laughs> oh, but that's good. I wish I'd done it today. <laughs> maybe um, take a t-shirt and uh, we'll take off in uh, maybe the whole <laughs> tucked in thing. Yeah, <laughs> go with that. It's very. Uh, we used to do this in a uh, high school tucking in like a sweatshirt in the. Uh, yeah, yeah. And I then am? the teacher would be like, "That's not school uniform," and he'd be like, "But it's a coat," <laughs> and it was quite <laughs> clearly not a coat. But we'd be like, "It's a coat." <laughs> um, Anastasia. Well, I, I liked it because I think it was uh, brave and it was intelligent what he did. Because I felt the second collection is, you know, almost like a second album, really, a second collection in Paris. Like the first one clearly highly anticipated, but with the second one you need to actually prove that you're worth the space you occupy in there. And I think he did because he showed something like which people didn't really, which I didn't really expect. I think it was different to what he usually does in terms of shapes and colors and everything. And I think, yeah, it would be interesting to see the next one. I think he's really developing to really something interesting. It's funny because I wonder, um, you know, there's a couple, within all this irony and within all this awkward, there's a couple of very obvious hit pieces. You know, there's a shearling, there's a, a couple of um, the kind of big fleecy, like, there's a lot of those in the shops right now. And there's a couple of pieces that have been snuck in there to sell, I think. Which is, is, is that, the, oh, Alman, is that something that's like, uh, 
Is he consciously thinking about that? Do you think it's the team consciously thinking about? I don't know. I don't. I don't know if they're, they're definitely not doing this to not sell. It's not like you know they mm. want people to wear the clothes and mm. as much as it can be everywhere to be happy for it. It's mm. not like this kind of a conceptual art collection. It's made for people to wear it and to find themselves into it. That's for sure. I like the complete honesty of it. You know, it's a sport collection. It says sport on half of the outfit. You know, it says it in Russian, but it says sport on most of it. In all the socks, says sport. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's like I like this like directness of it, and it's very well, Gosha. So it's only it's a very slogan. Russian also. A this, like, this is what it is. You know. Actually, Sorry, the one well, it, it doesn't look like sportswear to me. You know, like jeans and like shirling jackets. You know, so it's quite. I guess that juxtaposition of like a slogan. That yeah, says sport. But maybe this kind of like. It's, uh, after gym wear. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's Russian for sport? Sport. Sport. Oh. It's, uh, this is what's written oh, yes. in all the in on that on that red sweatshirt, the first one. It's, it says sport everywhere. The more I look at the socks, the more I want these socks. I know, me Def too. Oh, mm. come yeah. on, the sock is really important. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the most important. Darius loves collection. socks so much, but as no, you can but see, like he doesn't like them to be the same. <laughs> <laughs> but like the, 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 you know, like. Uh, it's really a tragedy if you're not wearing sports socks, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's the, um, what makes a good sports sock? Well, just that it's not. Just this white. It shouldn't be some happy sock business <laughs> or some scent sock or any. Not no sock. premium knitted, fifteen pound. If it's yeah, got, it should be you know, cheap. I and I'm not Gosha's sock is fifteen no, no, pound, but, but like <laughs> that's the only what you know. It needs to be a nice Cotton. short sports sock. Yeah, but I don't know. Americans like the uh, to the knee, right? But it's really hard to wear unless you have like very like no calves. And so you know skaters, you know they have calves, so they can have, you have to wear a short sock, because otherwise you get the triangle. Actually, he did have this kind of socks <laughs> last in last collection, because <laughs> yeah. I remember one look yeah, with did. the yeah, guy yeah, yeah. with the really big calves. Socks no, he did. Different. He had the sock, yes. um, but also he had the socks in the the collection that um, was selling in spr uh, spring summer two thousand fourteen. With the uh, weird symbol on it. Yeah, oh yeah, the weird symbol that was on all the. Was it Kassan yeah. or something? Yeah, was yeah. It? it was. I don't know. The with the was dawn, it. you know, the it dawn. Was a reference yeah, to yeah, he always does a weird sock. Yeah. It's good. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's easy. It's easy for people to buy. You it's know, easy. They come in. They want to buy into the. That's true. The the, the brand pair of socks. You know, maybe if it's Gosha, they might be. Yeah, like that's twenty-five quid. That's what I do. I buy t-shirts and socks from Gosha. But Gosha is pretty easy I mean, to buy. I mean, it's unisex. It's yeah. like, and I like the fact that I'm no. buying something. I think everybody that kind of yeah. likes the idea of it or doesn't know and wants to go and check, they can really come out of the shop with a piece. Well, yeah, because there's pieces for people that want to look a bit fashion, and then there's pieces for like hashtag cozy boys, which I think is. Something, boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like the wearing of lots of grey uh, jersey. Okay. So it's like, um, you know, I think that's what people forget. I was thinking about this earlier, and <laughs> when we were talking about it, there's a, we, do, we nobody talks about cuteness in men's fashion. Like, you know, hoodies are meant to be this awfully teary, scary, terrifying thing. Oh, but the hairs are not. It's so are cute, cute, actually. No, but yes. hoods are cute. It's like walking around with a teddy bear on your head. Yeah. It's like, um, like this. You know, I used to think that when I was 14. You know, like, it's really <laughs> cute. You have a point. It's very soft and yeah. it's comfy. And you feel protected, like... Yeah, it's just a like yeah. blanky. Yes. It's not like, you know... Like, um, you, you have a hug around you. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think people, you know, there's a lot of gusher is really cute, essentially. I like that red. Is it, does, it, does the sock say sport on it? Yes. So that's ironic, yes. I guess. Yeah. A sport sock that says sport on it. I don't know if it's ironic, maybe it's just what it is. Yeah. I think yeah, it's just I really believe it is actually yeah. just I what think it's it is. It's just the point. Yeah. Uh, you know this is what it is. Uh, maybe because it's in Russian logo, it uh, kind of sounds a bit exotic. But uh, I'm a little bit scared though of the Cyrillic. I've uh, already noticed a couple of uh, there's this brand I think is Bazaar 14 or something, and they're uh, or Bazaar. They're they're doing like the Cyrillic, and I'm like, okay, the, he hasn't got long until you know. Yeah, Actually but I, I think it's fine because I mean, he, it's his language, it's his alphabet. Mm. He doesn't really need to justify the use of it. No, no, and it's beautiful. And then of course everybody's going to do it, but at some point the people 
Some people know, some people don't. Yeah. Last year I did a selection of brands who use Cyrillic alphabet, and it's actually quite a lot already. I mean, uh, KTZ, TZ. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Well, lots of yes. wrong words, actually. Yeah, also. complete, complete. Compl usually it's like no complete sense. rubbish. It makes no, no sense, sense to Russian yes. whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. 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 I was checking that, actually. The Cyrillic alphabet that doesn't exist now. Yeah, but the old one. Yes. He was using the old one in some of the collection. He yeah. did those scarves in old Russian. Yes. I remember the one that I can't read. <laughs> I think it's... Mm, you were talking about naivety in Iran. Actually, I just remembered the press release and the, um, this Limonov party. I think actually part of it is that a lot of people who are part of this group look like this. So maybe it's not so much ironic, it's actually people in Russia exist who look like this, who wear that kind of stuff. Oh, they do. Exactly. So... <laughs> no, it's really probably just straight to the point. Yeah. That's a very Russian way. Well, on that point, <laughs> I'll get straight to the end. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.